Welcome to episode two of the It's Time to Jam podcast with me, Brad Refresh. On this episode, we've got producer DJ Drake Liddell from Carlisle, originally from the North East. Got a wicked story to tell. Just wanted to say before we get the episode started that we've now got a Facebook community group called It's Time to Jam podcast where you can ask questions to future guests or myself or you just get in on the information and get on all the new episodes that's coming out straight away. Feel free to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, Spotify, etc. Hey kids, what time is it? It's time to jam. So, uh, with me on this episode, I've got Drake Liddell, um, producer and DJ from Carlisle, um, sort of making a name for himself at the minute with Bounce, Hard House, um, Trance, under your Liddell uh, name. Liddell, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and is there anything else you do? You do a bit of speed garage as well, uh, I like? do, yeah, uh, which has been quite successful a couple of times, uh, a couple of re- releases on 1-7 Audio, which is a... That's a, um, a label over on LA. Right. So, yeah. uh, and you do a couple of house bits as well. Is it with Coda Recordings? Yeah, so? that's with Coda, yeah. Same way I do my research, you see. Yeah, <laughs> aye, aye. Um, so where were you at last night? Uh, I was at a club down Sheffield called Tank Night Club, uh, watching Jamie Duggan play a seven-hour speed garage vinyl set. Honestly, it was absolutely unreal. Like, uh, oh, oh, it's honestly, like I'd I'd love to just go back and do it all again now. Uh, like, is honestly, it classics? Ah, uh, it was all classic speed garage stuff uh, and that. Like, honestly, it was every tune like from start to finish was just banging. Like, what made you do that? Like, I know it sounds random, but like Sheffield just no, random, well. It? What it was was obviously Joe, me mate, uh, yeah. which is my partner Tanya's brother. Yeah. Um, well, basically, uh, we knew it was his birthday coming up in April, and that. Oh, um, right. When the, uh, I think it was, I think it was Tanya had seen it um, on Facebook, uh, and then I looked and I was like, "Oh, that'd be mint night!" That like. Live up to you. Live up to you. What you expected? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I so like literally. We were like stuff it like we might as well just book some tickets um and then like we'll not tell Joe until later but like yeah. we ended up just telling them anyway like <laughs> we're like I we're te- we're, we've got some tickets for uh, like your birthday weekend sort of thing I know I've sort of gone off on one already but what's the what's the difference like to a bounce sort uh, of event to like, it to that completely different like it's like when we first went in the club man honestly like it was like we did me and Joe were like we don't. We don't know. We don't. We didn't like quite know how to like dance, like sort of thing. Ah, it's different. It. Yeah, I know what you it mean. It was like we're, so we're just looking at other people and just like just sort of making up one little dance. <laughs> uh, Absolutely mental, like. But um, I the, the security down there as well was unbelievable. Like honestly, like when we first went over, there was like a dog van there. There was freaking. There were they took like a. Uh, like scans of your uh, ID cards and everything, and Mental. there was a uh, uh, what's it called, man? Like a metal detector thing there yeah. and everything and that. And we were talking to these, like I got talking to these two people in the queue, and the last who was with this guy, he was like, oh, um, she was like, oh, I used to work in here and all that, like years ago and that. I was like, oh, so what's it like now? She was like, oh, I. Uh, I says the security looks kind of tight, like. <laughs> she was like, "Oh yeah." She was like, "Probably because like a lot of people uh, like stabbings and all that like years ago and that." So I made you were like, <laughs> "Bloody hell!" Fuck you know. <laughs> but it was mad though, like, because when you got in there as well, like you know, like if you wanted to go out, like there was a big out. Side bit like smoking area bit. It Mate, was I've seen I've seen your video. Uh, so aye, aye. I, I, I don't know I don't know why, but I was on Snapchat before and I seen a uh, juice and you're right. And I'm just having a Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know what that was about, but uh, I, like. But yeah, no, I, um, I like literally we went to go out and they were like, no, no, you can't go out. If you go out, you can't come back in that. So we were. I was like, eh. I was like, I've never ever known a place yeah. like that before. Once you're in, you're in. Like, so is it a section? Was the smoking area sectioned off? I. I the smoking area was like. It was basically like when you went in, it was like these metal cage like uh, yeah, yeah. barrier bits up. So like obviously you had like a smoking area, uh, like outside, big like courtyard thing. Yeah. Quite big like, but then you went like downstairs to go into the club. Um, and honestly, Proper like underground. I thought I was meant like the the sound system was unreal as well. Like absolutely amazing. 
So we'll get on to you about starting out and getting into DJing. Yeah, man. So yeah. musically, when when did you get into music? Always been into music, really, even since, well, basically from being born, practically, like, it's been, like, a family thing, to be fair, like... Uh, sure, have you got any relations or anything like that as musicians yeah, or...? Yeah, like, me granddad, he used to play guitar and that. Yeah. Um, he used to play... He actually used to play live on Radio 1 Newcastle on Friday nights and that. Right. Um, I, me granddad, I, he was from Caribbean. Uh, so that's obviously where I get my... Me looks from. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, I, uh, and then, like, my cousin, uh, my cousin Juanita, um, she's a singer. Um, she doesn't do it now, like, but she used to sing all over the place. Yeah. Like, she's been on competitions and all that shit. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so, what sort of age were you when you, when you, were getting into music? What was, what, who was it you were getting into? Was oh. it dance music or what was it? Well, basically, like, because me dad has always been like into music and that like and he always had like big high fives and stuff and uh my dad was actually a DJ in the eighties it would have been I eighties and I think it was like very early nineties, um in Whitley Bay. Eighties, early nineties. Uh, so what what's that? Is it was it a pub jock? Like Um oh. no, uh he used to play in a, a nightclub. I'm positive what was it called again? He's told there's loads of stories and yeah. that like he used to play no, he used to play in two clubs actually. One called the Jungle. <laughs> right. In North Shields. I um, assume it's not jungle though. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um and then one called the Royal, I think it was in Whitley Bay. And they, that was like the probably like one of the best clubs in Whitley Bay and that one. Right. Um and he used to play like a lot of you know, like old house um like like basically what house was back then and that. so like acid house like, so like if it's cl- late 80s no like classic um, I don't know like you know just um, oh bloody hell you're talking like Chicago house Detroit house yeah, like that yeah, sort of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one it's like Chicago. Frankie Knuckles yeah, and, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. yeah that stuff fucking um, what a cool guy aye, aye. <laughs> but uh, aye, like I say and then like obviously me being a kid and I'm having music on in the house all the time and that. yeah um, apparently, I used to like ACDC as well when I was a baby. Not a, not a bad band. <laughs> no, 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 no. I like ACDC, like. Um, but I apparently I used to rock myself nearly out me walk, me baby walk <laughs> on that when I was like Fuck one year old and that. But I, uh, and then just obviously growing up with my dad, listening to music all the time and that. And then I think it was by the time, by the time I was about six. I think, I'm sure I was about six year old, six seven year old. Yeah, I used to actually go to. This was well. This was when we, we lived over on Gateshead side at this point, um, and I used to go to the galleries on weekends and that, uh, like shopping centre. Right. They used to sell um, Coliseum tape. Oh, uh, yeah. tapes. I know them tapes. Uh, yeah. So I used to go and buy like Coliseum tapes and listen to that. So it was like happy hardcore and that. That was when I got like into that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. you into your happy hardcore now? I've, I've, oh I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm into uh, happy hardcore. Right. And, uh, there's a lot of things that people are like that people have said to us before. Like they're like, I, th- I didn't know you were into that sort of like stuff. And I'm I'm so open minded, mate. Like I, I love happy hardcore yeah. and all that. But like it's just it's nice to know that people are growing up and listening to that sort of sound. Yeah, and then definitely. Yeah. They've come along and they're in the bounce scene now. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you, you hear a lot of people within the scene. It's like they grew up on and they're naturally progressed into uh, bounce uh, from there. So it's mad. all good to you. Coliseum was like happy hardcore. There was a bit of Italian uh, in, that in there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then basically from then it went to like After Dark. Um, and then they had After Dark 2. Um, and then from then on it was... Well, after that, then it was the the Blue Monkey. Yeah. And then when the Blue Monkey, had, uh, by the time it got like the new monkey in Sunderland and Pallion, yeah. uh, that was when like, that was when I actually like started going there. So uh, you, what you, what, did you go to the new monkey? Uh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So what year is this we're talking? Uh, the first one I went to, um, oh, how old would I have been? Before you say that, right, I know a lot of people who've said, oh, like, you used to go to the monkey and that. Yeah. And it's just one of these mad things, because you used to record every weekend, um, and you wouldn't get, like, 
uh, the named event. So, like, uh, for instance, I know you get like Sanctuary Presents, like so yeah. and so. So, with the new monkey, it was like it was 20 dates. FIFA March. Yeah, just dates. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah, just the new monkey dates. So, like, I know a lot of people I've talked to, oh. it was like the go and they'd be like, Right, so uh, my first monkey was this because I remember the tape that came out. Yeah, I went on the 4th yeah. of April uh, 2002. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. No, like literally, to be fair, like how you've just said, like 2002 there, I think that could have been. Was it, or maybe 2000. Oh, bloody hell. No, I would have been I 2002, I think, actually. Funny enough, yeah. you say 2002. Uh, I think that was the first time I ever went there, and it was, I'm sure it was July. And something's telling us it was July the twenty second. Oh fucking hell! Like, like I swear, I mean? to no, honestly, I'm everyone, not joking. everyone does that. No, it's like it's because obviously <laughs> the monkey's near. You, you, you remember the monkey because of like the dates the of it. Date, so it's yeah. like uh, so like when when you when you go like online like you see all the tapes uploaded it's just like new monkey x date and then whatever yeah, it is there's no yeah. names of events or right. like that um, there's no brands or right. like that run and I'm positive I ha- actually had a shout out on that tape as well right um. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so can you remember going into the monkey for the first time oh right. I, I, I'm, like I, the first time I went like I say it would have been like uh, it was July 22nd I'm very sure it was like um in 2002. Mate, I'll fact check this, you know, don't nah, you? Nah, nah, <laughs> honestly. Um, and then anyway, so, on my way there, I was a bit, like, I thought, well, I've never been, like, you know, like, the monkey, obviously, like, a yeah. club and that, you know what I mean? But it was, like, it was over 16s, like. Uh, and how old were you yeah, at this yeah, point? Um, bloody hell. I think I was, f- I would have been 15 at the time, I think. No, hold on. Yeah, I would have been fifteen. I think. So you were just you were just old enough to get in. Aye, aye. So you were straight in there yeah, as soon as you could, aye. sort of thing. So yeah. I, uh, but anyway, so first walked in and that, and straight away I was like, whoa, the sound system like just the sound good. system was unreal. Like, can you I, remember who was on? Tall. Uh, when I first walked in, oh bloody hell! Oh god, I actually. I don't think I could actually tell you that one, like, to be <laughs> fair. Like, I think yeah. I was just more, like, taking in, like, yeah. the surroundings and that, like, you know. Did you get a pot noodle? <laughs> no, I never got a pot noodle, but I got a few ice pops, like. Uh, <laughs> uh, little ice pops. Can you remember who, anyone who was on that night sort of thing? Uh, um, anything that stuck out well, to you? Well, the shout-out I got, I'm very positive it was MC Stompton, oh. the man himself. Fucking hell! I'm sure so, it was. Ah, you know, in fact, it was. Yeah, I. Yeah. So, so you and were hooked from it, there, it, then, were you? Yeah, yeah. And the shout out was big shout out to DJ Wizquid, Hollow <laughs> Green Massive. <laughs> oh, that's what hell. it was. Definitely, oh, I, I, I still remember that. Um, but I, uh, that well, that was me. Little DJ name I made up like when I was when I first started like getting into it. Like, right, so DJ Wizkid. DJ Wizkid, that was, that's what it was. Did right? you fuck that off when you discovered MC <laughs> oh, Wizkid? Yeah, I fucked that right <laughs> off. Right. Oh fuck it hell. Well, so you had decks at this point, had you? Um, um, 15, 16? Yeah, yeah. I I got my first set of decks. I think uh, I think I would have been about. I st- I first started messing about with them when I was like from about like twelve year old, like yeah. at my mate's house and stuff like that. Um, and then I think it was probably about when I was 14, 15 or something. Then I got my own set of decks. So at this point, what, what was the records that were being played? Was it Makina? Aye, Makina. No, right, no worries, aye. right, okay. Well, Makina, Spanish techno and that. Yeah. Um, and this is what you were mixing aye, in the bedroom? Yeah, that's something. what I first started like having a go at. Basically because of the new monkey and that. Yeah. That it's a massive influence. Yeah. Like, it's huge. The North East like, Eye, that's what it was like. I know Bounce has got a good a good thing at the minute with is it Ministry of Bounce Ministry and stuff Bounce, like that. Uh, Even Mont to do a couple of bit of yeah. uh, Bounce stuff, but uh, it's predominantly yeah. Makina, isn't it? Like, I, well, uh, the well pressure is like Mont as like sister, um, like brand. Yeah. Of, so basically, like, well, pressure has bounce in it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's like the sister brand of Mon- Monta, uh, right. which I've recently just become a resident for them. What was I going to say? So from there, so 2002, 2003 onwards, what were you doing at that point? Uh, well, basically, it was just like me and uh, one of my mates, Andrew Fullard. I'll, I'll just say his name, I, Andy F. <laughs> that's what he used to call himself, Andy F. And we were like, proper, like, 
fellow DJs, oh, as God. you want to say, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, all I want to do is do it, like, uh, DJ Whiskey and Andy yeah, 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 literally, <laughs> like, no, Class. no, honestly, like, we're, we're just constantly, like, constantly on the decks at his or at mine, yeah. sometimes, and then I even come up with a little idea, I was like, hold on, I'm going to make a lead, so it went from we hi-fi to his mixer, then to my mixer, so then we had, like, four decks and two mixers and that. Yeah, yeah. So we're just, like, pure experimenting and everything, man, honestly, like, uh, and then just, like, just absolutely hammering it for a couple of years. So you were, like... Learning to mix and trying to, like, understand the tunes a bit more and that. And well, So you were, like, making his Carl Cox, essentially. Uh, <laughs> <Four> I, <decks. laughs> I love it. It's, yeah. But, um, I, uh, and then... I don't know, my mate Andy, he just sort of like phased out of it a bit. So he's up. not into any of it anymore or no, anything like that? No, 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 no. And he's always said to us, he was like, I wish I actually like just kept on going with it. Like, But I did have a little bit break myself at uh, one point, which we'll get to yeah, anyway. Yeah. But, um, but I so then where it first started from clubs was... Uh, how old would I have been? I think it was... Oh, no, in fact, actually, going back to when I was, like, 16, me and me mate Andy F, we uh, were done with first little gig uh, in a pub called The Red Lion in Bertley. Right. Um, so is this more like something you have organised and yeah, then, like, yeah. all your, like, schoolmates yeah, come on? I, and like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Um, and then basically it just... <laughs> to be fair, though, like... It was it was quite banging like um, yeah. from the start, and then like all of a sudden it just started getting a bit uh, out of hand, and that. Um, all and the then, kids had to go and home then by was, ten o'clock. And then, <laughs> no, honestly, and then there was like loads of kids coming through from Bencham and that from Gateshead, uh, and then basically the place just started getting trashed and that, and then like it just ended. Oh, it, okay. it only lasted about. Fucking hell, probably what two, three hours or something. Oh, well, hey. <laughs> and that what was a it. first we got gig? Kicked out. Yeah, what a first gig. What a... <laughs> uh, it was. Fu- it was funny. Like it was funny. Mm. Um, so then, uh, from this point, are you handing demos out or out like that to anybody? Or what uh, are you, what are you no, doing? no, I weren't really doing anything like that. To be fair, we just it was like sort of making tapes and stuff, and just like I don't even like weren't even like sort of figuring out what we wanted to do with them. Like to be honest, but um, but. All in all, from there anyway, uh, my mate Andy sort of like phased out of it a bit, got rid of his decks and all that. I kept mine, I kept going at it, and then um, and then all of a sudden there was a DJ competition on in Kiss Nightclub. I don't know Kiss, that, mate. Kiss Nightclub, and uh, that, well, that was on the big market, sorry, uh, the big market in Newcastle. Right. Um, and I'd heard there was a DJ competition on, so I was like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on and do this, like, you know what I mean? So it was my first time playing in a proper club. Uh, I, f- I would have been nearly nineteen years old at the time. Right. And uh, so I got all me picking out all my vinyls, uh, but this was when I just sort of like got introduced into bouncing that as well. Right. So at this point, are you playing? McKenna, uh, no, um, it was bounce. Oh, this was a bounce uh, competition. Oh, yeah. interesting. So basically, like, uh, well, how the bounce all come about really was through like starting to listen to Wigan Pia and that. Right. Uh, that took Wigan up Pia. massively yeah. in the North East, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, the Wigan, starting to listen to the Wigan Pia CDs and all that, and then obviously like buses going down to Wigan yeah. Pia and that. What was your first volume um, that you you got? My first volume, oh bloody hell. So you can sort of see at what point you got into it then, do you know what I mean? I, no, I'm trying to think. Might have been volume 30-something. 30, 30 and I'm, Mine's the 37, I think, 30, or 36. 30-something. I can't, I, I can't remember exactly what volume, like, but yeah. I know it was definitely so in that the 30s. Sort of like, yeah, right, uh, so I can sort of gauge where you are at this uh, point. And then from there, you went to the competition? Yeah, I so I uh, ended up... Um, going to this DJ it was basically it wasn't like uh, you had to enter stuff like that you, it was basically just walk into the club with your records oh like an open mic you like, would say. A, like yeah, open deck sort of thing sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye. Um, which was quite good like but uh, I so I I mean I basically by this time I was like buying bounce records and um all the stuff that was coming in it, like Reflex Records in Newcastle, the Reflex yeah. shop. Um, and then there was even some bits in HMV and that as well. 
Um, because balance was fucking uh, massive yeah, back no, in the day. Like KB project stuff in HMV and that as well, man. Mate, I wish and we Alex were around K, then producing because we'd have made a fucking killing. Oh, but definitely, I hundred percent. I'm buzzing with fucking uh, fifty sales now, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Mad, but I anyway. So I picked out Army Records while I wanted, lobbed them, uh, on like lobbed them all the way there. Um, got there and that and like uh, I'll admit like. It was the first time I've ever played like in a club, and I was a bit, a bit nervous and that. Oh, fucking hell, what's wrong with us? Like I'm, probably shaking a bit. Yeah, like what's going on? But um, I so basically I'd played like uh, I think it was uh, I don't know I think it was but just a half an hour set I think it was. Yeah. Um, played a set and all that, uh, and then mind you, well I didn't win anyway. Like. Yeah, um, good for the experience. Though. Yeah, it was I. Um, I can't remember the lad who actually won. Now I can't remember his mm. freaking name. So, but it was all like club sound system. Something, yeah, did, something yeah. to get you sort of yeah, your in, foot in. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Foot yeah, in yeah. I. Um, but then after that, uh, I did end up start to get like there was a couple of times I ended up playing in there. Right. The Kiss Night Club I was it. What was that for the club itself? Or, like or? I for the club itself ah, yeah, on right, Saturday okay. nights, and I got like pretty pally. Um, like with the bar staff and stuff like that, and um, I it was uh, it was good crack, like, but um, and that was like my first little bit break, to be fair, and then all of a sudden, the lass I was with at the time ended up pregnant, so then it all goes out the window, then doesn't I, it? Yeah, it all yeah, went yeah. out the window, and that was like my dream shattered sort of thing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I thought, oh well, this is great, like that's. That's it, done. Yeah. Um, so then from 2000 and... When were we been? I two From 2009? Yeah, I would have been I. From 2009, um, I had this break from then all the way up until 2014. Right. Which was when I moved through to Carlisle. And when you moved through to Carlisle, I know we're gonna, we'll get onto that story, yeah. but... But what? What? Why did you want to sort of be DJing again? Did, did you get the buzz, or was someone talking to you? No, well, what it was, um, I'd seen that there was a comp. Well, no, it was my brother who seen that there was a competition on at the Vibe in right. uh, on Botrigate in Carlisle, um, and then I looked at it and I, to, like, I noticed it was a Monroe's competition, so I was like, "Oh, I, mm. we'll have a little gun of that." Um, so. I entered it. Um, what what did I have to do again? Oh no! Basically, I think yeah. I basically I messaged a uh, lad, Nicky G, and then basically it was just like yeah, just put you on it sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then there was a few lads got put on it. Uh, me, uh, Ricky G. Um, who else was on it again? Is it Flex? From uh, yes, from, uh, MC is he? Is he, is he from? Uh, is I, I from he's from my MC. way, isn't he? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I can't remember what his name is, but yeah, I know you knew you. Yeah, more flex. Um, and then Ricky G, the hard house DJ. Yeah, 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 yeah Ricky, yeah, yeah. And then there was a lad called Stomp a lot who ended up coming up from bloody. I don't know who that is. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I know. Well, you, you sort of like no, names come and go. I've noticed in within bounce there's a cycle of like six months where people. <coughs> Drop in, drop out, and then yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know what I mean, but uh, usually I can sort of remember who people are, but yeah. obviously not. Uh, and how did that go for you then? I um well, not very well. Like to be fair, I'd, well I played played the set, um, and then well, funny enough, that stomp a lot. He won, uh, which to be fair, I think really fairly smashed it like so in my eyes I, like when I was there I thought he's he's won him like, yeah. Ritty um, well Ritty's a good mate of mine and that as well he's actually me daughter's godfather and that as well but um, I saw that stomp a lot he won the competition uh, but that was when I got speaking to Chris Fletcher yeah um, and he was doing fiddling about with like all sorts of things like this whole mid dance management thing he was doing and that and that's what I'm saying I'm surprised he didn't cross paths at the time because uh, I was doing the indulgence stuff yeah and I remember the him doing the I remember him doing the indulgence uh, he, he actually done a couple in um, Penrith as well didn't he at that uh, 
I can't remember. Um, I can remember doing some bits for him, uh, and um, I'm usually pretty good with like events and stuff yeah. like that. But then he moved over from the attic to um, Botchgate. Um, I can't remember where that was either. But it was because it, there's so many venues on Botchgate that just changed the name and uh, shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I was doing stuff there. But I, I, that's where I met Jew. I yeah. met I met um, I met Jew at um, these Chris um, Fletcher events. And yeah, it's decent. Uh, but so from there, where I've just interrupted you. I'm yeah, sorry. Right. <laughs> but like from there, where did you go? I uh, no, basically what it was is uh, I got talking to Chris, um, and then he was like, oh, uh, he was like on about DJing and stuff, and like obviously I was on about me being from the northeast and that, and then he got talking to us, telling us like he played for Hangar Thirteen a couple of times and that as well. Uh, under the name Chris Dynamite, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, like I've always said though, like if it wasn't for Chris, I probably wouldn't have been doing what I'm doing right now today. Right. Because he was the one that basically went, oh, um, like do you fancy DJing like somewhere? Yeah. Um, and I was like, what like a set like for an event or oh, like, and he was like, no, no, just like. In clubs, yeah, there and every uh, there's a couple of clubs and that like who are wanting like wanting us to sort out DJ for them and that. Right. So I was like, yeah, yeah, enable that, and I thought myself, I thought this could be like me little foot in the door back DJing again. Yeah. Like, you obviously, know you had no connections in Carlisle well, at the time. It, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'll always thank Chris yeah. for that. Like, uh, I know this isn't like a fucking ass looking competition or not like that. Chris is one of the good ones, I reckon. He is. Yeah, no, yeah. honestly, Chris is an absolute... He's, he's a I know, he's, genuine bloke. He's, he's, pro, he's like faded off a bit now, hasn't he? He's yeah, doing the, yeah, he's, he's got a kid and all that. And yeah, but, yeah, it was... I, I always thought he was genuine, one yeah, of the genuine he is, ones. Uh, he is. You don't get many of them always as well. Always has been, Chris, and he'll tell you how it is as well, like... Yeah. But, uh, my, so anyway, uh, he got he ended up getting us in the vibe, funny enough. Mm. Um, but it wasn't like... He basically said, just play, like, a load of, like charty stuff and that yeah. and so I just started playing like progressive house stuff and uh, a little bit of EDM and stuff and um, EDM pop at that time uh, wasn't it 2014 yeah. um, and then like I was chucking a bit of bounce in there whenever I could and that as well like you know what I mean mm. as you do but uh, so I got us a couple of nights in there and then I got to know I had who owned the vibe and um, then I met a lad called Swayze and then he ended up jumping on some nights with us as like a duo type thing. Um, and then we were doing a couple of nights. Chris got with a few nights in um, O'Neill's Sports Bar in Penrith as well. Right. Um, and then a, actually doing a couple of nights in the attic in Carlisle as well. Right. Um, so like doing a, dotting about a couple of the, the nights and stuff. Um, but then I fell out with Swayze. Um, which well, it was really. I should have fell out with him, but like he fell out with me for some reason. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I don't even know what mm. happened there. Like, but I wasn't too fussed. I thought I'll just crack on and do my own thing. Um, so I from then on, then because I obviously got me selling well with a had who owned the vibe. Yeah. Then I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna put my own event on. Like, right. So that's where underground. Ah uh, right, so, okay, yeah. I think this is the sort of time when I'd started hearing about you. Um, I sort of everyone knows everyone locally, don't they? Really, yeah, yeah. But that's when I sort of seen your name coming up um, yeah. with Chris's events, yeah. and obviously underground came along, and you started doing that there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how was it the first one? I well, the first one was absolutely mint. To be fair, like, oh. um, and funny enough, like basically all, all I'd done, I thought right. Asked him if I could start like doing an event. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, no, but that you can so obviously whatever gets made on the door, you pay your DJs, mm. whatever, you know what I mean." So I was like, "Right, fair dues." So I, I thought for the first one, I'll charge like I only charged like three quid on the door, um, and there was the lineup. There was me, Joe, Ritty, Ritty G, yeah, um, Flex from right. over your way, um. I think that might have been it, actually. Right, so you've just got like a local, yeah, not really a yeah, headliner, I th- right? I think yeah. that was it. Three quid's not bad, is it? First, first, first yeah, yeah. So anyway, and then a couple of days beforehand, I'd only found out that Uber was on over the road at the venue, and I was right. like, oh, fuck. 
Them events are mid, oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I thought, oh my God, trust me, I have an event on at the same, and this was like December 2014. Mm. I thought, trust me, to have a night on the same night as that, you know what I mean? I was like, it's, it's not going to get I'm going well at all this, like, you know yeah. what I mean? But so at the start of the night, started off and all that, and I thought, right, a couple of people come in and that, paid me, but that, and that, um, and then all of a sudden, like, a lot of people come in and paid. They must who have wanted were, that who were going to Uber? Yeah, they must have wanted that fast sort yeah, of pay I, stuff. Eh? So the, the, there was loads of people who were going to Uber who mm. come in, but while there was like a speaker at the door, so you could hear the bounce yeah. at the front of the club. I can remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played for it. Oh, what is it? Was an MC. He used to run an event in in the Vibe, and I played for him there. I remember seeing Jew there actually. Yeah. Um, again, oh, what was his name? Um, M- MC Benson. Do you know him? Oh, Benson, I am. Right, he used to run an event in there as well. Roughly, uh, about the same time. Was it? Yeah. was it Elevation, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I played for him a couple of times in there. Um, it wasn't a bad venue, that was it. Like, uh, I, well, I enjoyed it. But, I, I played for him uh, uh, once in there as well. Did it the same spot we're talking about, that one? I he, think we played for one of his nights the same time once. I think we were on the same lineup once. I'm where was positive. the event? Do you know where it was at? It was at the Vibe. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> I can't remember. I just no, really can't remember. I know, but anyway, I so so from there, there was loads of people coming, and then all of a sudden, everyone like it ended up where there was probably about like ten, fifteen people left in the club, and I was like, oh my god, everyone's just fucked off and <laughs> went to Uber, and then um, I would say probably about an hour later, and I was like, nah, this is no good. There's no one even hardly in here, and nothing, no one's even coming here and out. And then after, like, like I say, after about an hour or something, I was just about to say, I think we'll just call it a night, lads, mm. you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, there was tribes of the fuckers coming over from the venue mm. back to the vibe. Oh man! And there were like loads of them with the wristbands. Can we still get? Can we get back in here? And I was like, I fucking get yourselves in. And then they were bringing loads of the mates as well who were peeing as well. Yeah. So I had ended up a really good night, like absolutely banging. There's not more disheartening when there's knee on there. Yeah, no, yeah, no I, Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh my god, man. But like, well, when I seen all these people just coming yeah. over the road, I was like, fucking hell, look at this, <laughs> look at this, lads, we're staying up. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> get them bouncers back in the <laughs> we're staying open but well, yeah I, so from there you've, you've, you went on to a couple of events and yeah that. we've done like a few events in there um, a few underground events in there um, and it started getting a little bit better there was a couple of little a few that weren't as good um, and then then from there we ended up doing um, there was no, I, the vibe had shut, so then we started doing, we ended up doing a couple of nights in Mint Night Club, which was down the road at the bottom, which used to be the old mood. Um, and it was really good, like, it was quite good layout and that, and had a good system and lights yeah. and everything. But uh, we'd done a couple of nights in there, and then just as it was starting to build back up again, the brand, then they shut. Um, it's hard graph when you can't oh, get a venue yeah, no, <laughs> I, um, and then pff, quite a while after that then we ended up over an insomnia right uh, which was used to be the church and that uh, used to be called party party as well oh yeah I know where um, you are did a couple of nights in there then it got took over by Anne-Marie and that is the Phoenix. Then we've done a couple of nights and then it got closed. And then after that, I was like, fuck it. I've had enough. That's me promoting shit done. Like, you know so I mean? yeah, at this point, are you DJing at other events and stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, I'd, in between all that, I'd done like a couple of like room two things. Um, I'd done like back to basics and that and fuck. Kenty. I uh, seen you. Yeah, I was there that night. With, uh, uh, I went with, down with Todd, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. down at Pure. Yeah. Um, um. I've uh, done room two at Bouncing in Chester um, for Sean. Sean, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, um, That was a funny night. Uh, yeah. Right at the end, on the last... Well, basically, the, the last two people that were about to go on was Jamie Cousins and Nathan Mitchell. Right. Um, and literally, just before they were about to go on, someone spilt a full drink over all the electrics and that and the whole room just cut completely out. Oh, (laughs) grim. 
Oh, oh. This, it was fucking mad. Like I was like, oh my god! Like seriously, I can't believe someone's just done that. Like. Yeah, well, where was it in Chester? Sorry, uh, that was at the live rooms. The live rooms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I never, uh, I never played there. Uh, sound system in there is mint, like. Yeah. Um, I was, I used to play for for Sean quite a while back. Uh, um, and what was it he used to do there? Was it uh, Penny Blacks? Who used yeah. to do that one? And then um, he then moved over to the the Tivoli, uh, mm. and I played a couple there as well. I remember playing there one uh, mm. New Year's Eve. We went down a couple of mates, and that we had a car full. Mm. And because obviously from obviously you know where I'm from, so yeah. where from mine to to there, you're talking sort of three yeah, hours, yeah. three and a half hours. New Year's Eve. Anyways, I drove down in fucking pair of fucking uh, PE short type oh. things, then blacky and socks. So not getting a sweat on here. I'm a fucking sweaty bastard at times. Like, <laughs> but uh, drove down there, and you got to Wales and that, and then fucking got a speeding ticket. Yeah, it was just just a night of just continuous shite. Yeah. So. Uh, we're in there, and um, I, I was getting changed in the middle of the street, and this old woman come past walking a dog. She said, what, what are you doing here? You're, like, screaming at me in Welsh. And I'm like, yeah. fucking hell, I didn't even realise where I was. I'm in Wales. Class. So I, I was getting changed, and I put my jeans and that on. Just obviously, you don't want to turn up to a club with fucking... Aye. Do you know what I mean? And then uh, I got to the club, and one of my best mates, John, he, he lives in Carlisle now, actually. Um, he went in, and we were talking to people, and having cracking that. And I went on, and they, they were just doing yeah. whatever... Um, I think Todd and that were there as well. Anyways, at this point, someone spiked John, right? <laughs> no, hey, it was fucking bad. We, so uh, I can remember after bouncing, right? We, we went we went up to Wigan um, to to Pure for uh, was it Unity event? I think yeah. it was called. So it was like Sanctuary and yeah, Kenny's events, yeah. right? So we were going up there, and fucking Todd was sick out this my, my window of my car, so I had sick all, all down, down the, the fucking side, side of the car. Oh, yeah. It was disgusting, mate. Like, Class. and then but like the other one, Johnny, who I was with, he he had a uh, he he'd been spiked with his stuff off this last, <laughs> and he 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 was seeing ducks around the car, and he was fucking screaming at me. He was oh, kicking my, he was like out. kicking me, and like don't get out, and he's holding me by my neck. Don't get out of the car. The ducks are gonna get you. The ducks are gonna get you. Fucking just shit you get up to uh, when you would you like pals and that yeah. going to events. It's like. Phew. So we got there and that, and it was just it was just a wild. I can remember driving home, and I pulled up outside of Todd's house, dropping him off after that night. Um, and what had happened was, he got out of the car and he like waved us off, and Todd's dad's standing there like looking at looking out the window, and I'm like all right, and he's looking at the side. There's orange like go faster stripes down the <laughs> side of my car. Looks <laughs> sick, like yeah. Right, but yeah. go on, carry on. You would, but yeah. I uh, I anyway. So from then on. Um, I'd played, like, I was on a, a bouncing and that, um, and then I've played, like, quite a few Room 2s for Kenty again for Halloween House of Horrors. Yeah. So at this point, are you producing? Um, yeah, well, basically, I started producing... Blah, 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 when would it have been? I actually, I actually started 2000... And, it was just before New Year, 2000... And, it was in 2015... Right. And it was like just before the new year. So it was like just just the start of two thousand and sixteen where I really started getting into it a bit. Right. Um and what what were you doing bounce then, was it yeah? Uh, yeah. I I well the first track I actually made, well had a go of was uh, a Makina track, Apology. Um which was terrible. I've still got it now, like. Yeah. You no, know, just so you can listen to it. Some, someone to look back on who just laugh about and that, yeah. you know what I mean? And they think, fucking hell, what, what the hell's that? <laughs> Mate, I'm the same. I, I have to, from when I first started producing and I listened back to it, I'm like, yeah. fuck me, I must yeah, have been deaf. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what you I mean? You realise how much you've progressed yeah, in that, yeah. don't it's, you? It's good for it a level is. of progression. Yeah, it is, um, definitely. With my tracks and stuff and even with my mixes and my live sets and that, I, I, on my hard drive, I do it by year yeah so like, yeah I, you, well that's what I if do if you go but from year to year you can see yeah, your improvement you can, as, as it is well that's like, how I do it as well I have it done like mm. so it's set by date mm. um, and honestly you grow as an artist like yeah. even pr- pr- take producing out of it as a DJ and everything you can sort of see your progression of your, yeah. of your style and that through mm. time do you know what I mean because mm. um, obviously when I first heard of you I like don't take this the wrong way or anything yeah. like that. Just the way the way I see it is, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, he's trying to like rip off like a like a Luke Hudson or an infected right. bounce tune. And obviously, it's just as you start not finding your feet. But now, if you listen to your music, you can see it's developed into like your own style. Your own thing, yeah. um, and I imagine anyone who knows sort of bounce and stuff like that, if they put a tune on now, they'll probably identify your track by yeah, saying, oh, yeah. that's like 
yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a Drake Liddell yeah, riff, yeah. or that's like, oh, that's, a, that's his bass sound, or yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, just little yeah, things like can that. I, definitely, so it, takes, it does take years to, to get your signature sound. Yeah, definitely. And we all start ripping off somebody at some point. Oh, like, you do, are you? When I, when I started mine, I was I was ripping off, um, like, Fitzy Rossi Bees, and do you know what I mean? Like, it's a sound that was popular, and oh. then as you as you develop as, a, as an artist, you, you, you sort of... You find your feet with your own sort exactly, of style yeah. and sound, isn't it? But now, <laughs> there'll be probably people out there who rip... Your sound off and oh, like aye. nothing against them because everyone starts somewhere. Oh, but what I'm getting at is someone will be doing it, a Drake Liddell riff or a Drake Liddell yeah. bass sound and like ripping it from your track. Oh, it's just, aye. it's inevitable, it happens. Oh, oh definitely. It's I just, like, um, I, well, don't get us wrong, like lately and that as well. There's, I've had like a lot of people who are wanting, to, like, who have been wanting us to do like tracks for them and that as well. Right. So, plug that now if you want. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, <coughs> so, you do engineering, is that right? Yeah. I, I, do, I do. I have done like a lot of tracks for like quite a lot of people in that. What's um, this? Is this bounce, bounce again? Yeah, yeah. right. Or okay. bounce. Like, I've done, well, I've done a few hard house tracks for uh, a few people in that and right. uh, before and that as well. But I haven't actually made hard house. Like, in fact, I'm actually going to tell you. I'm just going to have a look at my computer. Yeah. So yeah. when when you're doing this bounce stuff, are you are you um, are you running around with a bed cover on your head as a ghost, or are you just are you doing it as a collaboration, or what, like, what are you doing? Well, a bed cover and sometimes collaboration as well. Right. Like, um, if the bounce has been working for you, and then like, I will it, uh, You've got to put your focus somewhere, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's. I was talking to you about it, and he said about the the doing these trance stuff, and I said, are you going to do any more bounce? Yeah. And he said no. He says what well, he says. He says he says he will now and again. But if if you if you put your all your energy into one thing, yeah, well, you only it. get good results. Do you yeah, know what well, I mean? That's it, if you sort of leaned into, there's nothing wrong with doing multi-genre mm. stuff. But if you've got your focus on hard house mm. bounce and everything in my between, main, my yeah. main focus now is bounce like. Yeah. But I still have me little dab. Like oh no, the, that it's healthy. It, yeah, it makes you grow yeah, as a producer yeah, as well. Definitely. Like obviously that yeah. uh, the house couple of house bits I'm doing for Coda. Yeah. Um and then obviously I still do my odd little guilty pleasure bit Makina stuff and yeah. just give them away for free downloads and that. Yeah. Um, it's just one of them though, isn't it? It's like um And then trance as well. Like I've obviously I do the odd trance track. Yeah, uh, I've just re- one's just been released on Premier League recordings, it's called. Um, so what's this uplifting trance? Is yeah, it like yeah, the one? Is it one three eight stuff or slower? Yeah, one three eight. Right, uplifting okay, trance. Okay. Aye. aye, that's me. Uh, that's the stuff I like. Oh, yeah, definitely like aye, yeah. Yeah, all uplifting melodic stuff and that. What about your your production videos you put online? Give a little little dance in that before you put your fucking aye, videos on. There. Nah. No, I don't <laughs> know. Just like they seem to get a lot of attention. I noticed that. Like I notice yeah. if you if you can put like a track on Facebook, like a link of your SoundCloud. And not many people really interact with it much. Yeah. Um. As much, well, not as much as if you just do a video of you sitting in the studio. Yeah. And then yeah, blah blah. I'm in the studio. I'm just gonna show you what I've. Yeah. Finished. I agree. No, I I, to- I totally agree. I do the same thing. And people think it's I don't know. I think it's like because people have got something to watch and they think oh, I oh, look mm. he's in the studio blah, mm. blah blah whatever you know what I mean. So the, the thing is with me, I I see I seen a couple of weeks ago someone posting about um oh you, you doing this it's cringy as fuck and I'm just like fuck off like oh, do you know yeah, what I, mean? no. I honestly couldn't give a fuck yeah, do you I'm know something me, like, hey do it right do if you're whatever. having fun show people you're well, having fun it, it's character building yeah. and it's the same with this podcast me and you's going to have a conversation now yeah. people's going to listen to it they're going to know you deeper as a person now than yeah, they did definitely an I. hour ago yeah, do you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. so if you want to fucking have a little dance in that while you think hey, yeah, I, I, I fucking love it mate let's so. have a dance now yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it, it's, it's right though isn't it yeah definitely I but um I saw uh, I forgot what I hope to. Uh, no, I was just talking um, about production now. Yeah. So, I, so sort of moving forward, we've from, hit the pandemic and that. Yeah. You were you hammering the production for yeah, the pandemic Yeah, I was like stuff? trying to like keep on with the production as much through the pandemic and that, um, and then just try to push myself out there a little bit more, uh, and then obviously like played a f- couple of more events and stuff, sanctuaries, mm. um, and obviously. I was a bit gutted last year, ha- uh, Halloween, because, f- well, Farrell had already booked us for in Carlisle for Halloween. Right. And then Ken 
Kenty messaged us like a week later and asked us if I wanted to play for Halloween House of Horrors main stage at Pure. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, yeah. And I thought, well, and I said to him, I was like, basically, there's not, there's not. I, I said, I said, I could, I, I could either play up here and then come down to Pure afterwards or whatever and all that. But and then he just said, ah, oh, he says, I'll just get back on you, like you know what I mean. No, it, you know, it's the best way, mate. Like, um, but I'm, I didn't, I've... I didn't want to like, I mean, like, as like, because obviously playing on Pure main stage and that, and I was like, fuck. But like, I wouldn't just turn around and go like to Farrell or sorry, mate. Uh, I've been booked to go and play. Following um, all, so I was on main stage and yeah. that now. You know, what I mean, sorry, mate. I'm not playing for you anymore. You know, what I mean, it's it's more like a loyalty thing. Yeah. For me, morals. Um, yeah, I respect that. Like for me, what I do is <coughs> anything that comes in, whatever comes in first. Well, that's it, isn't it, it. Right, and then if another booking comes in. If if it's not gonna work, say because obviously Carlisle to to Wigan is fucking yeah. like uh, what is it now and after yeah, or something like two that. Hours, uh, it's, if you're not on first, you're not gonna be on yeah, well, last day. It. It's, it's hard. To yeah, fucking, uh, so it's hard to do. But I'm always first come first serve. Yeah, with, yeah with it, And it's yeah. the best way to be. Definitely. You don't. I would never drop anything no, because. No. It well, straight, it, 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 it'll just give you a bad name doing but shit like that. As exactly, well. and you sort of you get that's, blacklisted. Yeah. And another thing as well, Kent will probably book you fucking. A year down the line, right. like there's no, there's no, yeah, well, there's no he, he, well, to be fair, like is I've co- become quite friendly with Kenty over the past couple of years, mm. and that, and he's a pro- a genuine sound lad, like yeah, um, he knows what he's doing, like, but mm. uh, there's well, we've, I've recently had talks with him um, for like bookings and stuff like that lately, mm. and anyway, so. Yeah, I'm sure people will expect to see us on a few of these events. Yeah, it's more than yeah, like, you know what I mean? Um, well, a question I've got for you, which I'm, I'm, I am surprised at, that, um, did you, have you never done Spain or out like that? Because with your sound, that like, um, you do quite a lot of bumping stuff, don't yeah, you? Do you know yeah. what I mean? The bump and drops no, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's it, like... Uh, to be fair, I would actually, I would absolutely love to go over and do like an event over there. Like, yeah. I think it would be absolutely mint. Like, I'd, I'd love that. Like, definitely. And like you say, obviously with them, like sort of style of drops and that. That's like that, well what I was there. getting at. Like, because obviously with that style, they they tend to love all the British yeah, producers. Yeah. Nothing against the Spanish, right? I'm just yeah. gonna put it out there. But a lot of the Spanish producers just haven't quite got the production level of yeah, what, what yeah. a British person uh, yeah. obviously you've got your big names like your yeah. Gary Select and yeah, uh, yeah. Nesca and yeah. Pascu and, and all that but like there is a lot of Spanish uh, producers out there that's getting on lineups and the production level is just not not, not up to not, scratch uh, so that's why they usually you always see it they always jump all over the, the British sort of producers yeah, and yeah. that like Luke's massive over there yeah he is uh. um, and as you say you see, you uh, see a lot of people head over that uh, way but uh, I thought it would have been something that well, well, has it been talked about at all? Uh, no, it hasn't been talked about, but I remember one time I'd made some tracks for someone um, and they got released on Acceleration and um, and then Kenty was telling us that the Spanish were like all over them, like absolutely yeah. loving them. So, but uh, yeah. I, um, I, uh, I w- it is someone I'd love to do. I'd love to go over there, like over... Uh, what's it called Bilbao or, yeah Bilbao uh, yeah I'd oh, love, to, I'd love great, to go over there and play a night over there like definitely 100% like I know I'm going to go class. off on one again but I've got another story yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go yeah. on right uh, basically f- was it the second time I went out there I went out and um, I went out to the to the I uh, got picked up at the airport and that by the club there was a club manager it was yeah. like um, it was none of the DJs and that and a lovely fella and all this and then took us out for food and whatnot and we've done whatever and the club like the uh, club Venezia uh, whatever, it's, yeah. uh, whatever it's called it's like out in the mountains and I went out in the mountains to to, to this this event and I'm not joking they do not they do it in a different way to uh. what we do like this was like a proper secluded like venue and I got there and there was it was just I can't even describe it to you, mate. Like, yeah. there was hundreds of cars in this car park and it was in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and before it even opened, they were all off there and not giving it what no for. They, uh, yeah. all, they all, all had, like, CDs and that on in the car, like, blasted right up, giving it what for in the car park. I was Fucking like... Hell. 
this is going to be fucking mental. <laughs> like, yeah, and honestly, I only got that book in off the back of, um, I did a, a remix of like a Paramore track and that yeah. was like, that's all it takes, just aye, like one, does, one chart remix yeah. and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Crazy. And they're but so I got there in the club on that, and it's all going off big style. Like they dance, aye. they kick their legs above their head, aye, and all that, and they're fucking. Yeah, aye, I've seen videos like aye. it's fucking crazy. <laughs> Different I was, level. I was on five till six. So one of the one of the DJs said, "Hey, yeah, come come around here." They're like fucking. It's mental. Aye. Like so, it's like come come up here. We went into this fucking this room and that, and there was like a, a just a, a coffee table on the on there in front of us and was like sofas it all went all the way around sort of against the wall and it was like fucking ch- like chill out area yeah. sort of thing so we went in and uh, there was just a big massive pile of fucking um, speed just on the no on the way. fucking on the, on, the, on the thing and I was no like way. oh my god fucking and he was like and he, and he just went put his hand on my back and went, bro come on you can have some I was like mate sorry I don't I, I, by the way I don't take any drugs or yeah, anything like yeah. that I'm Aye. sort of teetotal I don't yeah, even drink man. anymore but um because I was a fucking nearly an alcoholic, <laughs> but um, and he was like, "It's all right, it's all right." And as I went round the corner, and it was like on the on the sofa at the back wall, I'm not going to say who it is because it's a bit fucking, yeah. it's a bit shit. But there was a certain DJ there, and he just had a fucking, he was caked in he on his white face, face. Yeah, <laughs> a white face, and he he, he he was speaking. So I was sat down next to him, and I was like quite nervous at this point because I'm like, I'm, I'm not really a people person. Like, I just think, you know what I mean. So I was sitting there, and he's like proper going on at me in, in Spanish and he's like talking to me and I'm like man I don't understand and he's carrying on going speaking Spanish <laughs> and he's going and he, he just kept going to me da, 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 speaking Spanish uh, I can't speak Spanish yeah. and he kept going upa 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 and I'm like what the fuck have I got myself into here and yeah. it's like 6 o'clock in the morning and then like that's the thing though like, it's not there isn't a massive it is it is all like full on there it's like yeah. everything's 150 mile an hour uh, so so I got on um I played my set and that, and then I think I, there was what uh, Gary Select was on after me, yeah. and he played his set, and he's like a god over there. I'm not ah, even yeah, joking, is, right? Yeah. I'm not even joking. I like everyone throughout the night was on playing their sets. As soon as Gary come on, the the, the dance floor become like a sardine. Yeah, kind of. it was like they, they, they treat him like a god. There was like people bowing and that at the front for him. Hell. It was insane. <laughs> so he went on, and then he done like he done like an encore at the end and everything right. when when it's all there. And when it come down to it, we were all leaving. They were all still partying in the cars outside. Fucking it was fucking hell. They all had boots full of like fucking JD and like drinking yeah, line, full of drinking yeah. whatever. And and the, they had like the CD packs of like uh, uh, the Bumping for Life festival. Uh, is uh, no, is it Bumping for Life festival? What's it called? The Bumping Forever festival? Uh, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, and DVD cases of it, and they were all just fucking passing it around in the cars. It was like it was insane. Like- and I thought, these lot are not going to stop. Uh, absolute nuts. So this was like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. Got down to the uh, the airport and that, uh, they just dropped me, picked my stuff up from the air hotel, went straight yeah. to the airport. I flew back and I landed in Edinburgh and it got to like sort of, it was like 5 o'clock in the evening. And then I was getting a few followers on Instagram and that one's some of the yeah, people discovered yeah. who I was. And it was like so-and-so... He's live, so I was watching it while I was waiting to get picked up about the transfer. Mm. They're still in the car park going for it, <laughs> fucking fighting. Mate, they've oh. been gone 24 hours, oh still going God, in the thing. Oh, my God, like... And uh, it was... And Joe, it always sticks out into me, in my head of... Um, still... Um, <laughs> There's not, you home and everything in there. No, I was, still in, I was in Edinburgh at this point, so fucking to be fair, it's only been like 24 uh, hours. Fucking but hell. It was, it was insane, but it, 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 it's a different scene out there, mate. But um, as I say, like it always sticks out in my head because it was um, the tune that was on in the background was a uh, Excess Project. Oh yeah, do you know which one I'm on about? Yeah, I think I know which one you're on about. Uh, yeah. And it was that in the background, and they were it was must have been like 160 BPM, and they were just proper going for it. Fucking I was like, hell. "Go on, lads." <laughs> Fucking mental. But yeah, uh, honestly, I, I've, I asked you about this. Um, because I'm fully expecting you to, to see you on a Spanish lineup within. Yeah, yeah. I know there's still the COVID stuff and that that's going on at the uh, minute, but when it's all uplifted, I imagine you're probably going to go out there. I would say, well, hopefully, it, it, I would like to. Yeah, you know I, mean? it, no, I, I can guarantee it's on the yeah, cards, isn't it? I would it? definitely like to. Like, um, yeah. Have you got any other goals or out like that you wanted to achieve within, within um, Bounce? I just want to, like, uh, well, I have. Well, to be fair, like lately, since the start of this year, 
like everything's just I don't know it's like my year this year like everything's just started like full on take off like yeah so I um, think the ball's rolling the ball's rolling now like um, I mean like these big releases I'm doing with fucking Zara Taylor Oh, this is um, Bounce, uh, yeah. UK. Quality label, isn't it? Uh, uh, some uh, good music I mean, like coming out Zara, there. she's like a huge vocalist from um, from Canada. Right. Uh, I've become quite friendly with her and that now. How did you get I, on I to her, speak, I usually speak to her and stuff. Um, well, it was basically through Facebook um, and through Trance, right. to be fair, as well. Right. How I actually like got on her. Um, and... Like her vocals are amazing and that like she's she's unbelievable and she just she's all about original stuff and that as well. She doesn't like doing re sings yeah, or yeah. out like that. Um For me, I've I've heard um one track that you did, it's the um I guess, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. Could be could probably is that one up there. What's that called? Uh Shamed. Shamed, could be that maybe. Have you done one before that with her? What was the first one you done with her? That one. Oh that one, right. Yeah. So it must be that one. Yeah. Um and I heard it, and I was like, "Oh, this is good." This it had like a, the big trance melody in it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 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 that's the one. I... Yeah, and it built up and built up and built up. And I was saying to John G about this, I was like, "I would just like it for if we just kicked back in, and it, and if we got that that donk drop." Personally, it's not for me, yeah. and obviously, everyone's got their own yeah, style on that. Yeah. But if you did an edit of that with the with the thing with back the, in with the synth, I um, no, well, basically, like, uh, obviously, the first drop is like that, and then obviously, like. You've got the yeah, second yeah. breakdown, and then it comes into the synth for the last bit of the track. If I was to play it, mate, but, I'd probably cut your rubber. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, no. Well, funny enough, uh, John, uh, John G, uh, he's, he's honestly he's a proper gentleman. Him, like he's, he uh, he's, he's good with feedback as well, isn't, great, isn't he? Yeah, honestly, yeah. he's a sound bloke, man. John, honestly, like I've become quite good friends with John now as well, yeah. uh, and he's uh, he's actually asked us if I'll do an edit with. Now basically take the hard drop out, yeah. and then just have the the synth, uh, the synth in for the first drop. Yeah. So I've I've said to him, uh, I've said to him, I will do it anyway. So <laughs> yeah. there you go, John. Yeah. Uh, just when I get time, though, I mean, like lately, I've got all sorts going on, man. Like, I think this, studio sessions booked yeah, in. This year's been crazy like I think for everyone yeah, as well like, I, I think everyone just wants to get back yeah, out like after I, that pandemic it sort of shut yeah, everyone down um, I think a lot of people found the feet and confidence mm, to come back out and just fucking get on yeah. with Raven like I, I think that's what it is I, essentially I have been told uh, well to be fair you will see us playing main stage in Pure very soon like because yeah. I've ha- I have been told from someone it's, it's on the cards it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna so yeah that's, that's good so, good on you um, and then there's uh all these other bookings I've just all of a sudden come up with and that uh, I think I've got like about eight bookings so far like That's good, all the way up until September and then there's still more to come uh, yeah. and I'm looking forward to doing this one up in Bucky in Scotland right, uh, it's Random. Up, right up the top of Aberdeen like um, may have to drive that I, well, I, well basically the, the club owner he's paying for me flight to get there flights what, from Carlisle uh, well I basically he said to find out like where I can get a flight from, like transfer, like yeah, yeah. flight there and back or whatever. Um, so basically, all I need to do is get the price and that, and then he's going to sort it out. It's not bad, um, is it? And then basically, I get picked up at the airport, took to my hotel, dropped Looked off. Looked after. And the club, well, the hotel's across the road, road from the club, so all I need to do is just waddle over once I'm sorted. And that. <laughs> See, do you know what this is? This is like. Get a Spain like, booking in it, I, well, it in sounds a cold like place, it, I, yeah? yeah. In a fucking really cold uh, place, yeah. yeah, yeah no, like quality, quality, but, good um, on you. But yeah, but, yeah I, there's uh, quite a lot of bookings coming up. Uh, I'm playing in Escalation on the 28th of May. That's down Colney. Um, obviously, I'm a resident for them. Escalation. Right. So uh, what's that? Is that a bounce event? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, Cass. He, uh, he's he's the no a promoter, right. the promoter uh, right. I can't say no that one to be honest DJ uh, Cas Caspian um, but uh, oh yeah I, sorry I don't yeah, know yeah yeah I um, so I'm really shit with names that, uh, what else have I got up uh, I'm playing alongside Club Filler on the 29th of twenty ninth of this month uh, one three five, three five yeah, yeah. yeah I um, do do what else is coming up I'm sure. Bloody hell, I'm lost with bookings, yeah, man. Honestly. Yeah. What else have I? <laughs> Hold on, I'm just going to get my phone out a second. Uh, we can chop oh, this up. <laughs> uh, we'll have to... Uh...
Oh, the 7th of May. Uh, they've asked me and uh, Kova's brother, um, Carl. Yeah, to Juicy. do uh, Juicy. yeah to oh, do yeah. a night uh, the Black Bull in Egremont. Right, yeah. So we'll do like a five hour thing in there. Um, and then Not bad. Do do what else? Our oh, switch in Carlisle, yeah. uh, which is Jordan's. Um, he made Jordan Russell's event. Yeah. Um, we did sort of set up things for that before the pandemic. Yeah. Well, everything went to shit. Yeah, the pandemic, but man. now, like, obviously he's. he's Deciding to go on with it, uh, the fly is out there, and that like uh, he's got bounce assassins headline. And I that. seen that, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah, I did. Um, and then there's one in Middlesbrough, that's to be announced still. Uh, and then there's another one in Whitehaven to be announced. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I don't want to tell people on the podcast <laughs> though. Yeah. Um, right. Aye, and then there's the bookie one up, uh, and that's Abedin. September. And that, aye. So just to. Uh, wrap this up now uh, anything else you want to plug obviously you've done any tunes coming out or like that um, I've got another one coming out on acceleration I don't know could be in the next couple of weeks I think I'm not too yeah. sure I haven't spoke to Kenny or Alex do you want to um, plug your your SoundCloud or your, your socials or out like that before you get off ah uh, yeah uh, if you want to follow us on SoundCloud it is Drake Liddell um, and then I've got me trans alias on SoundCloud as well, which is lit, just Liddell. Yeah. Uh, um, and then obviously I've got I've got a YouTube channel which is called Drake Liddell and Liddell Trans. Yeah. Um, I've I haven't really sort of done like a lot with that though lately. So, but if you want to subscribe to us, um, I did have some videos on their production stuff and that. Um. I believe I've still got... I took them off, like, mm. but I've still got a one uh, writing trance melodies and stuff. Um, oh, right. But I'm actually I'm actually going to do a couple more. Um, right. Not, like, full-on, like, production stuff, just, like, what you know, like, to... tech tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, compression. Yeah, yeah, EQ yeah. And just, like, little tech tip things, uh, yeah. which will be handy for people... Um, like starting out and stuff or whatever like you know what I mean uh, I, yeah. I mean I don't really see the point in doing like a full on um, like tutorial thing like from start to finish making a track and that really because yeah. Steve Willows sort of like went into doing yeah. that it's done a class job at it so, as well, yeah, yeah he has yeah. done a really good job I haven't actually um, watched them all through but like yeah. I've, I've, I've had a little flip yeah. through a couple of them and yeah. like but honestly like a lot he's of done people really speak well. highly of it like yeah, he's, yeah. and he's, des- he's brought uh-huh. through a lot of new producers yeah, to the scene as well well, I, well the one that I'd done ages ago it was more like a I was doing it live at the same time though, so I wasn't really doing like things yeah, yeah, like yeah. in like an pro- order. Like, yeah, it, was, no, it was just as you were. Yeah, yeah, it right. wasn't really properly in stages, sort of thing. Mm. Um, so, but mind you, like a lot of people still did say that like it, it did helped. help yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there was loads of people messaging us actually saying, "Oh, the videos are great. Like, I've, I, they've helped us a lot. Like, you know mm. what I mean?" So I'm glad I've like been able. I love helping people in that. Me like, um, yeah. I mean, there's a lass called Jade Hardy. Yeah. Um, who's I can't say she's her, getting yeah. out there as a DJ now. Right. Like, uh, uh, I've, bounce I've, like. I've, uh, yeah, I've yeah, become yeah. pretty good friends with her and Craig, mm. uh, a fella. Um, I think they're coming. They're coming back up here on the twenty third of mm, the twenty third of this month, actually. Yeah. I, um, to do well, basically, like she's wanting me to learn that production yeah, right. and that. Right. But she's well, she's coming here, like to my studio, yeah. to learn it. You know, what I mean, and I'm just learning on stages and that. And like, I mean, she's picking it up really well as well. That's good. To That's be good. honest, like so. Right, we'll wrap this up now then. Thanks for uh, coming on. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a good crack as well. Yeah, um, yeah. It's good to get to know people more on a personal level as well. Yeah, so man. thanks for listening, everyone. Um, see you later. See you later. <laughs>